good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Um, we want to talk a bit about research infrastructures, and there's quite a lot that we can say about that. But we want to start by talking about what we mean when we say research infrastructure and what that means, particularly in a humanities context. So for this first session, we're going to talk a little bit about definitions, and we're going to talk about some of the tools we might use to come to a more um, solid understanding of what we mean when we talk about research infrastructures. So I've assembled a group of about five or six different definitions of research infrastructure. And I want to talk a little bit about what they highlight, what they tell us about research infrastructure, and perhaps what they tell us about people who write about research infrastructure, which is also very important. So this first one is a fairly core one for those of us who work within Europe, because this is the definition from the European Roadmap for Research Infrastructures. So this is a very large umbrella funding uh, program from the European Commission. And what's very interesting about this, this is a, a very standard and quite long-standing definition. And what's very encouraging about it is that it doesn't just talk about synchrotrons or big pieces of equipment. It talks about associated human resources. Um, equipment, yes. Instruments, yes. But also knowledge-containing resources such as collections, archives, and databases. So it's really important to keep in mind that when we talk about infrastructure, we're not just talking about the hard stuff. We're talking about the soft stuff, as it were, as well. And by the way, don't worry if you can't read all of these on screen. We'll have all of these available for you in the materials as well. Now, another definition that builds upon this or that sort of acts as a counterpoint to this is, is this one. Now, this is actually coming from uh, an information science research perspective. Um, and it also shows what I would see as this very sort of heterogeneous um, set of definitions that we're, we're dealing with. Um, they can be shared, unbounded, heterogeneous, open and evolving socio-technical systems comprising an installed base of diverse information, technology, capabilities, and their user, operations, and design communities. And this is one of the things, if you kind of you notice I read this in a certain way, we find that definitions of research infrastructure tend to have this characteristic of having long sets of comma-delimited characteristics. Again, the desire is to keep the definition of research infrastructure open, but to make sure that we have some kind of basis for understanding what we need as that substrate that underpins good research. Now, this is what I particularly love. Um, this particular piece of work is one I would really recommend reading if you're interested in infrastructure because it has a lot of key um, concepts expressed in it that I find very useful. And this whole idea of infrastructure as the thing that gets below the level of the work. So different disciplines will have different approaches. They'll have different tools. They'll have different ways of doing things. Even different researchers will have that. If an infrastructure is forcing them to work in a certain way, then it really isn't infrastructure because it isn't supporting their knowledge creation process. It's supporting some other assumption about knowledge creation processes. And that will, as the example puts, um, really uh, put, a, put a break on the ability for these developments to become viewed as infrastructure. Now, the term cyber infrastructure also exists in the, the environment that we're looking at. And this particular quote is from John Unsworth's uh, Our Cultural Commonwealth, which is a report we'll talk about a bit more later. A very big a landmark of the modern development of research infrastructure, in particular for the arts and humanities. And the idea that he brings out this idea of cyber infrastructure. Again, a certain amount of this comma, that comma, but also a very strong statement about what the humanities need to work in a digital world. And then the last of these kind of external definitions is this one, which is really more of a, of a cultural studies perspective. The idea that infrastructures are the mediating structures within, within the research ecosystem. And this is an idea that I, to a certain extent, pick up on, although this wasn't really done in any, any sort of um, intended sense. In a bit of work that I did in 2013, when I started talking about infrastructure as something that allows finite individuals to achieve beyond their own capacity to know, to do, and to see. Again, I also fell prey to the, uh, the comma delimitation. But for me, the th important thing about the infrastructure is that it takes people and gives them more potential. It, it increases their ability to do what they're doing anyway. And we picked up on this uh, when we decided to define um, what research infrastructures were doing for the Parthenos project, because they do bring together knowledge, data, people, and services. And these are really some of the key things that you're going to find in any research infrastructure. 
but in a different balance, and that's what's really important. For example, in European research infrastructure developments, you'll find much more emphasis on the data side, whereas very often in the US, you'll see much more sort of um, people-based, sort of almost humanities research center focuses that will be um, trying to deliver a research infrastructure layer for research. Now, this is all very helpful, but when you start looking at some of these entrants, these possible candidates for the idea of research infrastructure that are out there in the world, um, you'll find there's a huge variety. And they may all be infrastructures. None of them may be infrastructure. How do you know? And how can you actually start to understand, well, where do we need to actually start managing like an infrastructure? Where do we need to seek that level of being below the layer of the work to be effective? So this is just a list. Again, it's in the materials. And I came up with a couple of tools you can use to start looking and questioning and sort of testing your thinking about research infrastructures. And the first one is something that I call the research infrastructure scorecard. Um, any of you who've done any kind of business qualifications know there's this thing called the balanced scorecard, which always has four quadrants. I only really came up with three. But what happens is you see that infrastructural practices break down into a number of categories. And some of those are really more, if they're missing, what you have might not be an infrastructure, it might be more of a tool. Others, if they're missing, you might have more of a project rather than an infrastructure. And some others, you may not have a research infrastructure, but you may have an infrastructure for teaching or for public engagement. I'll give you some examples of the kinds of things I was thinking of when I developed this. So for instance, if a, a digital development is, is lacking scale and complexity, then it probably is a tool. Maybe it doesn't serve diverse users, or maybe it doesn't bring together diverse resources. Maybe it only covers one or a very small uh, portion of the research phase. Um, and, and maybe it only supports a certain kind of method. This is the sort of the lack of ability to get below the level of the work. Um, and for me, that would be more of a tool, although it may have an infrastructural role in some ways, or maybe a component in a research infrastructure. Now, another thing is, what's the difference between a research project and a research infrastructure? Well, the thing about research infrastructures is they reach out beyond their own team. They reach out beyond the people who build them, the people who they are built directly for, and they reach out beyond the time and the space that they are built for. So research infrastructures will generally engage with things to make them interoperable and sustainable. So these would be things like standards, like a data lifecycle approach, um, IPR and uh, licensing arrangements. Um, they will connect, they will evolve, they will involve, and they will very often aim towards a certain kind of openness. So that's also important to remember about research infrastructures. And then finally, if you're talking about a research infrastructure, you're really talking about a certain kind of data at a certain kind of granularity. Um, what is accessible and interesting for a concerned citizen is not necessarily going to be useful and interrogable and something that uh, an expert researcher can build on. So that baseline of expertise is quite important. So this is one way of looking at something and, and understanding whether it may or may not be uh, a true infrastructural development. Um, but there's another perspective that I'd like to introduce you to. And this is more about the infrastructural assets. And we'll talk a bit more about infrastructural assets when we talk about sustainability. Because how you view what the infrastructure is about, what it delivers, and, and, and what it provides to its community is very important for how it is actually sustained. And we defined a number of things that I kind of put into this radar plot. Things like some may have a bricks and mortar place. They may have a building. They may have a. Um, they may have that kind of instrumentation, and that can be very important. Um, but there may be a strong element of networks and communities. Uh, they may be very strong on software tools and services. Um, they may be very strong on federated research data collections, or they may be strong on knowledge and publications. Now, again, these are all important elements that come together to support the research process. But I would say that depending on how many of, the, um, of these concentric circles you would fill in in each of those quadrants, in other words, how strong a development is in each of these areas, you might have different kinds of infrastructure. And again, knowing what we're talking about is an important challenge at the beginning of talking about infrastructure. So if they're very strong maybe on bricks and mortar in communities, you may have something that's more like a research center. Whereas if they're very strong on the networks, but also on the tools and services, it sort of starts to sound a bit more like a standards organization, like ISO. Um, 
if it really is a technical infrastructure, very strongly driven by tools and by software and by services, then I would say that's more of a technical infrastructure. Whereas you'll also have the kinds of knowledge infrastructures that would be very strong in research data. So you'd have you know, the, the digital iterations of libraries and archives. And then finally, you'll have the sort of the most comprehensive, which would have all of these things together, but would really perhaps be pushing out the, um, the knowledge and the publication, so more of a communication research infrastructure than any of the others. So these are all valid. It doesn't mean that it's bad to develop something that is one way or the other. It just helps to understand the challenges and help to understand the definitions that we have when we talk about research infrastructures. And this is, of course, a statement that has a long history. And that long history and the sort of the theoretical underpinnings are what we're going to come back to in the next session.